Alright, have you ever had to deal with something that looks like this? Where you can't even read what the buttons look like, and probably if you tried to press them, they wouldn't work because the little membrane switches have long since deteriorated and been infiltrated with water. Or how about a switch that looks like this, where the uh, temperature changes and the air quality have deteriorated the cheap plastic hose and caused it to crack so there's no pressure and uh, it's corroded and the switch just doesn't work so it doesn't turn your jets on. And this is like every hot tub that I've ever had experience with and when my client and I got together to figure out how we're going to make the control panel for this hot tub, we decided to make it so robust that there was no chance that it could ever break or ever not turn the jets on. And uh, you know, a, a lot of the hot tub, the whole hot tub industry is kind of a massive scam because I think they want to make the cheapest possible product to sell you on, you know, having massive like hip hop rap parties with, you know, a million people in your hot tub. And so most of the products for the hot tub are just real trash in my opinion. And so we decided to develop our own custom control panel that uses these high quality uh, aluminum IP67 LED switches that have a three color LED and also integrated with one of these Blue Sea Systems temperature monitor. And we ended up doing a pretty interesting thing where we spoofed the temperature sensor with an Arduino using a digital potentiometer so we could tell the display to display whatever temperature we want. Um, which allowed us to decouple the temperature sensor from its own thermocouple. And we use a thermocouple that is in the pump works, which we'll see in the next video. So the rest of this video is gonna be uh, an explanation of the design development and final assembly of the hot tub control panel. Enjoy. So I wanna use this video to not only explain how we designed this control panel, but kind of go through sort of the general design process I use for designing hardware where you have to take off-the-shelf components and certain constraints and integrate them all together to make a final product. So what are our constraints? Uh, we wanted to fit the control panel within two of the tiles. We knew what the tiles were. They're three inch by three inch glass tiles. And it ended up actually being there's not this top row. The control panel goes right into the hot tub. And we also knew which switches we were going to use, uh, which I just talked about. These aluminum IP67 uh, three color LED switches and the Blue Sea Systems temperature monitor. I'll put links in, in the description of these parts. Um, so the first thing I did was model, accurately model these components. I believe I was able to download the switch models and I, I just whipped up the temperature sensor. And knowing the sizes of all these allowed us to create the control panel itself. Uh, this is the bezel that holds the control panel and then this is the control panel. Uh, the switches had built in o-ring grooves and they came with o-rings, uh, but we added a o-ring groove for the Blue Sea temperature sensor. And uh, basically, you know, you look up the O-ring that fits that size and it'll give you the correct dimensions for the size of the O-ring gland, which is what this groove is called. And I also knew that we were gonna have an O-ring here because this plate is gonna seal against this, um, this plate mount, I guess you could call it. And for that, we basically just use O-ring material. And I ended up putting a break. You, you, you cut this to length, basically, and it, it installs in this groove. And uh, I put the little break at the bottom, so if any water were to get in this, it could drain out. But it's tight enough and it overlaps that I don't think water is getting in this. And I'm recording this after this has been installed and covered in water, so it's been bulletproof. All right. Finally. The screws that attach this are special screws that have built-in O-rings. 
you can see here each screw has a little o-ring on it and same thing follow the you know follow the manufacturer's instructions for how to create these countersinks and this whole thing is then completely sealed once we had a complete design I got my friend uh, Andy to 3d print a mock-up of this design and that allows us to ensure everything fits the nothing's too small or too large in, in reality because in CAD sometimes your intuitive uh, sort of design experience makes you make something a certain size but once you get it physical it doesn't really work and he sent that 3d printed part over we put all the switches in it we put it in the tile and it, you know it looked great and so once the client could see the control panel you know it, it was it was easy to move on to the next step which was creating a, a fabrication drawing and sending it out to a Fuqua machining to get the part machined and he knocked it out he knocked it out of the park I, I was really pleased with not only how fast he put it together for this one-off but also it was just every tolerance was hit right on the money uh, so you know if you need if you need sort of quick prototyping type work I, I would recommend uh, reaching out to that guy you saw a little bit of uh, the beginning of this process at the beginning of this video my friend wingnut uh, is taking the machine part to a mirror polish RIT Formula SAE sanding group represent and he uh, also knocked it out of the park I mean this thing you could see uh, you could see your face in it and then it was off to the anodizing shop all right we're headed out to SNS anodizing to get the control panel for the hot tub coated because the control panel was going to be positioned in a place where it was going to get splashed uh, or even submerged with the chemical laden water of the hot tub we wanted to put a protective coating to keep the aluminum uh, from corroding. So we went down to SNS anodizing and put a hard clear, which is not a dyed anodizing. It's they actually just grow an oxide layer right on the uh, the, the part itself, uh, and it turned out awesome. They really do good work there, and uh, we actually have a video uh, that details the whole process in much more depth. A uh, bonus bit of video. So now that we had a completely anodized control panel. Uh, it's time for assembly and uh, configuration. With a good amount of planning and high quality parts and tight tolerances, assembly was really straightforward. I just put it all together, uh, put the O-rings in, connected all the switches, and then the, the real effort was wiring the whole control panel to one of these uh, waterproof Deutsch connectors. The wires coming into this control panel are the 24 volts of power, a ground wire, three wires for each of the switches that control the RGB LEDs, a wire for each of the switches that are for control, an additional two wires there, and then the two wires for sending and receiving the resistance value for the temperature sensor, so a total of uh, 12 wires that all get uh, routed and soldered to the pins of this connector. Each of the two control switches for this hot tub control panel have uh, built-in RGB LEDs which we can use to display information like a timeout for the jets or you know aesthetically pleasing colors uh, and we so we wanted to be able to pulse width modulate those LEDs so we could have uh, you know an, an, an infinite color space and, and make them undulate and do all sorts of cool stuff uh, but these LEDs are are what's called common cathode uh, RGB LEDs, which means they have uh, the same negative side and you send power to the individual R, G, or B positive sides. Uh, but most of the Arduino boards that do 24 volt switching, uh, MOSFET switching for pulse width modulation are all low side control, which would work for a common anode LED where you basically drain current uh, you're basically controlling the negative side of the LEDs, whereas we need to control the positive side. Um, and uh, there wasn't really a board available, so we whipped up our own with this screw terminal breadboard here. And the schematic looks like this. Here's three of the sub-circuits. There's six of these in total for the two um, RGB LEDs. Uh, the Arduino outputs 5-volt control signal to the T1 transistor which then switches the Q1 MOSFET switch 
which provides 20 volt, 24 volts to the uh, LEDs. With the control panel assembled and all the electronics complete, just a little bit of programming from my client who is a software engineer, and we had a working control panel. So this was a, this was a fun technical part of the build, and the next video is going to cover the other side of this, which is the control box that has all the relays and switches and stuff like that. So thanks again for watching. Let us know if you have any questions about this, and uh, we'll see you next time. Hi, if you liked this video, please let me know by clicking that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. Please check the notes below the video for more ways to keep this channel going. Your support is greatly appreciated, and always, never stop building.